It's funny how when you're working on a project, like my last video where I reproduced these nut joints, something else comes from it and you have ideas from that. And I had the idea for this joint. This one's my first test piece. It's not particularly good and I'm going to see if I can improve on it. The tricky part of the joints is cutting the square holes in this light coloured piece and I did think about just doing those by hand and I'd quite enjoy doing that but if you had a whole chest of drawers then that would probably get a bit too much. I realised what I need is a mortising machine, I don't have one but then I remembered a couple of years ago I had a mortising bit arrive in the post, I didn't order it, I don't even know where it came from, there was no message card, nothing. To use one of these on the drill press you need an attachment and I think that clamps around the collar at the top, it comes down and it holds the chisel part in place and then that allows the chuck to turn the drill inside it. I haven't got that so I've got another method, it's pretty crude but we'll try it out. This is how I made the joint that I showed at the start, don't take it too seriously yet. I put a couple of loose fitting skateboard bearings on there and then I put it in the drill press with a nut tight between the bearings and the chuck. Using a guide that I roughly made, it holds the chisel and stops it turning while the drill clears most of the waste and then the chuck pushes the nut and the bearings into the chisel so the chisel can square the hole up. Obviously this needs to be better but it shows that the concept may work. You need a couple of bearings that fit well onto the drill bit and the outside diameter needs to be the same as the shank on the chisel. One of these mortising bits only costs around $12 off eBay. A couple of bearings cost a few dollars and you could even manage with one. I thought a second one may help a little. With a collar made from whatever you have lying around and a couple of hose clamps, it takes five minutes to put together. So if you haven't got a mortising machine, then this is an easy and cheap option to be able to make these joints. I'm not sure how these are set up and there's a recess in there that the end of the drill bit sits in. And I wouldn't think that that should be running tight in there because the end of the drill bit's just going to get hot. So I'm going to set it up with the drill bit pushed forward ever so slightly. I'll put a small washer on there just so it's not pushing directly onto the bearing. And to set that drill bit forward slightly, I just need to have a little bit of play there when I set the chucks there. Or just That should do it, just about a millimetre or so. Just to show how the chisel and the drill bit move independently of each other, I'll hold on to it while I'm making a cut. I wouldn't recommend doing this, but uh, it does work. And once the chisel engages onto the wood, it won't move then, and it works perfectly well. In my last couple of videos, I've mentioned me joining the Makers Mob. I'm now excited to tell you that my first woodworking tutorial is up and live, and here's co-founder Adam Henkel to tell you a bit more. With woodworking tutorials from YouTube's top makers like Jimmy DiResta, the Samurai Carpenter, John Peters, and blacksmithing with Liam Hoffman, we are so excited to welcome Neil to the Makers Mob team. Along with over 40 woodworking projects, Neil's first project is now live inside the Makers Mob. And for the first 100 people to sign up in the description below, we're going to give you 50% off your first month. So click the link below, see if that deal is still available, and along with the rest of our world-class woodworking community, I'll see you on the inside. I've just been experimenting with a couple of improvements and this is just temporary, we will do a better job, but I put vice grips on the collar here and when I start it up, you can see that it stops that from turning, but I will make a proper holder to do that, probably out of plywood. And this is not good enough to make a mortise with, it wobbles about far too much on the drill press, but because I'm using a guide, that doesn't matter. I've screwed a few scraps uh, to this board here and that's clamped down, and now I can make these without having to clamp the workpiece down. So I've got the guide uh, screwed to a piece of scrap, which will be our workpiece. I can hook that under there and I can guide it into the right position and make the cuts. So now I just need to make a better guide and make a better base and make a holder for this. But you wouldn't even have to do that if you didn't want to. You could make one out of plywood, it's just not going to last. And you could just use vice grips for that and a few scraps there. I'll start with the template because that's the most important part. I've got this piece of laminate flooring. It's pretty hard wearing and it should last fairly well, but I'll just have to see how that goes. 
I'm using a template that I printed that I made in Illustrator. The squares are three eighths of an inch and the gaps are quarter of an inch. So I put a gap at the end and that's why I folded it and started the template there. I've taken the drilling chisel apart and using the chisel, I'm marking where the holes need to be, paying close attention and being as precise as I can. When I come to cut these out, the point of the drill will interfere with locating the chisel back into those marks, but it only takes a minute to drill those centers out and that will solve it. I'm being extra careful to set the chisel back into those marks. This may not be 100% accurate, but it will be close and I reckon it will be close enough. When the setup's complete, the joints will take no time at all to make. They're a very strong joint and they're quite unique. So I reckon it's worth a little effort now and the setup's really not difficult to do. To move the video along, I've spared you the tedium of me cutting a few pieces that make up the base. It's all very simple and I'll show you. The main bit is a piece of plywood that's big enough that there's room to clamp that onto the drill press table. And I've recessed a couple of bolts underneath. And then next, I've got a piece here that's an off cut of the workpiece that we're going to use. If you use a different thickness workpiece, then you'll need to make a new one of those, but all you need to do is chop it off and drill a couple of holes, that's all there is to it. And then next, I've got this piece, which is the same material and the same thickness as the template. And then I've got a piece of plywood with a cutout there. I've bolted it, you could screw it, but there's quite a lot of force goes on the underneath there, so I think bolting is, is better. There's nothing precise about this, we don't use the back of the fence there, the only thing we use is the underneath of this hook. Next I'll make the arm to stop the bit from spinning, but again you could just use vice grip, so this step is totally unnecessary. I'm also making a couple of rings to go either side of the arm which are even more unnecessary as they're just there to hide the clamps and make it look a bit better. It doesn't need much at all to stop the bit from spinning as I showed by holding it lightly with my finger and thumb. I'm going to thread a bolt straight into the plywood and that will be more than adequate. And lastly I'll screw those totally unnecessary rings to the top and bottom of the arm. And again the arm is just to keep the chisel in the correct position. When it hits the pillar of the drill, it can't go any further. It's wobbly and like I say, this will only work with the template. You wouldn't be able to make an accurate mortise with it. Here I'm trimming down the template. I need the outside edge to be quarter of an inch and it needs to be quite precise. To do that, I'm cutting a little off at a time. I'm pushing the workpiece into the blade while it's not spinning. I flex the blade, holding firmly onto the template, and then when the blade lifts up, the template stays where it is. I make the cut, and it will take off just a tiny slither. This method works really well when you want to take just the tiniest amount off something. I didn't make the template long enough, there needed to be enough length to clamp the workpiece to it. It's easy enough though to make a new one from the old. I'm gluing on a strip of plywood for a fence just to make it quicker and easier to clamp the workpiece in position. To reduce tear out, I'll score the back with a mortising gauge. That works a treat, now onto the other side of the joint. The first part is very easy, we just need to make a quarter inch groove along the edge. 
That needs to be 3 eighths of an inch or the width of the mortising bit away from the fence. This piece should be at least 3 quarters of an inch thick or 19 millimetres. My piece here is a little thin at 18 millimetres and doesn't leave much material at the shoulder. And the last part of the joint is to make cuts through here and leave tenons like on this test piece. And to make that test piece, I use these couple of bits of plywood uh, screwed together. I don't have a T-track on my router table, but I just ran it along the fence and that worked out fine. And then to stop so we don't come through the front, I just set a stop block here so it couldn't travel any further. And then lastly, to make the individual cuts, I just kept that in plywood spaces and making each cut but I think I've got a better idea and I'm going to try that first. I'll make use of the template that I cut short earlier I'm going to cut it even shorter and then I'm going to make a dado in the back of this piece of plywood this piece will set in and that will form a carriage we can clamp the workpiece to it and then move it along for each cut. It needs a pin to index the template to do that I'll drill a hole using the mortising bit I'll use the chisel just to keep the bit aligned so I can accurately drill the hole in the correct position. For the pin I'll make a hardwood dowel. I need a 3 eighths of an inch dowel which is 9.5 millimetres. My dowel maker goes down in half millimetre increments so that worked out great. I cut the dowel down a touch more and then rounded over the edge. It ended up being a perfect fit, so now it's ready to give it a go. I've added a small piece of plywood to the side and that just makes it a little bit easier to line up the workpiece. And then we clamp the workpiece on, we put the thinner shoulder towards the base of the jig here. And the last part of the setup is to find the starting position and line up the outside of the bit to the outside of the workpiece just by adjusting the fence. And I'm using a 1, 2, 3 block but anything square, a piece of plywood, whatever. I'll clamp the other end of the fence down as well just to make sure it doesn't deflect at all. I'll just ease the ends of the mortises over with my marking knife. It only takes a few seconds and the joint will go together easier. Fingers crossed it works, let's see if it goes together. In my last video there were quite a few comments about how long the jigs would take to make. They really didn't take that long and these ones would take even less. I'll just recap what's needed to make these joints. You need a mortising bit, a couple of bearings and a couple of hose clamps and it takes five minutes to put that together. Next there's the base and the template and they don't cost much at all, just a couple of bolts and they take ten minutes each to make. And the last part to make the other side of the joints, that takes about 20 minutes and that's made from just scraps of plywood. I have no idea what to call the joint but it's very strong, it looks great and it only takes a minute or so to make each side. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, if you did please like and subscribe, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. If you'd like to check out my first Makers Mob project, how to build a folding desk, just click the link in the description.